Hey everyone, my name is Jake Hill, Senior Marketing Manager for Rain, and in this video, we're gonna go over the features and functions of the Rain Performer. Let's get into it. If you haven't done so already, go to rain.com slash downloads and download that user guide. Also, make sure you have the latest firmware installed and you have the latest version of Serato DJ Pro installed. So we'll start with the platters themselves. So the platters are eight and a half inches as far as the platter itself, but the top is a seven inch acrylic disc and it attaches with magnets. So we see we have four magnets and then four touch points on the platter itself. And the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is kind of find your feel with the enclosed slip rings that are included in the box with your performer. So for optimum performance, Try not to go over two slip rings so you can layer the plastic with the felt and, and so on and so forth. But you can also just go with one slip ring. Uh, on the, for this example, I'm just using one white ring on each platter because to me, that feels the most like what I'm accustomed to. Uh, I use butter rugs on turntables, so one white ring feels like a butter rug to me. So just ensure for consistent feel and performance that you have the same setup on both sides. So. Once you dial in your feel with those slip rings, you can also start to um, dial in other aspects of the performer to match your performance style. Uh, one of the easiest ways to do that is just to become familiar with the main menu. To access the main menu on the performer, just hold shift and press the hardware software effects button. Another quick tip as you get started with a performer, any labeling you see under a button in orange, that is a shift function. So for example, this hardware software effects button underneath in orange, it says menu. So that I know that if I hold shift, which is also orange, and I press this button, I will access the menu. So that's a, a quick tip that will help you as we're explaining all the various features and functions of the performer. So I already have a physical platter marker on my acrylic disc. So I wanna get rid of the needle marker. So I'm gonna dial that in by going in the menu and I go down to wheel display and you can navigate the menu by going up or down with the joystick. You can also use the encoder knob um, to navigate. And to select a menu function, you can either press the encoder knob or you can use the joystick to go left or right to navigate in and out of the menu tree. So I'm in the wheel display menu area. So I'm gonna turn off my needle marker. I have needle marker selected and I can just turn it off by selecting off. If you choose to have the needle marker on, please note that inside Serato, there is an option for your refresh rate of your screen. So if I were to go to library and display, you can see there's an option for maximum screen updates per second. It's recommended that you set that to 30 or higher because it translates to the LCD displays on the performer. For example, if I were to set it to five, which is definitely lower than recommended, you can see how that needle marker starts to get very, very choppy. So if I were to set that to 30, which is the minimum that we recommend, you see that it, it smooths out quite a bit. And if I were to adjust that to 60, it's even smoother. So I can also, in this area, if I'm a wheel display, I can adjust the time preference. So I can do remaining or elapsed for the time. And then I can also have library view on or off. And that is when I turn the knob, I'm able to see library view. And I can also, in my library view, change that I'm seeing either the key or there's an adjustment for time. So by default, key is on, that's how I like it. So now I can see key in my library view in that second column next to BPM. And then the other thing you can dial in before you get started, before we get going with all the features and functions, is you can also dial in your up faders. These precision fill faders, they are adjustable in the menu. Again, shift, hardware software effects button. I navigate through the menu to the uh, channel faders. And here I can set the contour from zero to 100. I can also set the reverse to make the cut in up top. So I like it how it is straight out of the box, which is a contour 50 and a normal non-reversed um, you know, cut in point. And the last thing I think uh, you should adjust before you get started is your crossfader cut in. So that's in the menu too. I go to crossfader, navigate, and I can cut in left or cut in right. So for this demo, we can just dial it all the way down to zero on cut in left, and then cut in right, we can dial it to zero as well. 
So those are kind of the, you know, setting the stage for your particular DJ style. And uh, I think with those adjustments, you can pretty much get it to where you want it. And then as you DJ with it, you can adjust things to kind of uh, more closely match your style if you feel like maybe the crossfader cut needs to be a little less sharp. So you have a little, little white space, so to speak, for your cuts to sound a little crisper. So, but those are the main uh, areas of adjustment or customization to get started. Again, slip rings, you got uh, the needle marker on or off, you got some library view adjustments, and then the crossfader and precision fill up faders. All right, so now we have those set, let's start looking at all the features and functions. I'm gonna start with the deck area here, and we're just gonna go around clockwise down to the pads. We'll talk about the pads and we'll jump over to the mixture section and talk about the various effects. So first, we have start and stop time up in the corner of the deck. So this side's playing. So what this will allow you to do is dial in the braking speed of your platter. So if you want more of a uh, power down effect, you can turn the stop time all the way to the right. If you want more of an immediate break, you can turn it to the left. That's worth noting that that doesn't adjust your start time. Only your stop time. So it's still an instant start. So up top here, we have the beat jump controls. And so what that'll do, if you uh, notice the encoder here, this is your beat jump length. You can see that in your digital display. Right now I'm at 16 beats. You can adjust it to four, eight, you know, whatever division you'd like, or one, or even down to a 30 second. So what this is great for is if you're setting uh, cue points throughout your track. If you haven't set them yet, you can set them every 16 bars. So, and I can beat jump by pressing either the left or right. So I'm jumping forward 16 uh, beats. Or I'm jumping back 16 beats. And it's also really handy if you're at the end of a track and uh, you uh, are still looking for the next track to play. You can just beat jump back, you know, 16 beats and then you'll be, um, you know, back 16 beats so you have a little more time to find your next track. And it does beat jump on beat so that you don't really have to um, worry about any sort of disruption with the audio if you're jumping back 16 beats. And then beneath that, again in orange, you'll see it says display mode. So if I were to hold shift and cycle through, I'll cycle through the various LCD display modes. So we have our waveform view, we have this album artwork view, and then we have an additional view, which looks more like the Rain 4 view, which is some different information laid out. For the most part, the center display will display a lot of the same info. We have our beat jump length in the upper left-hand corner. In the lower left-hand corner, you have your loop length. So uh, you can adjust that, you know, you can see as I'm adjusting the loop length, you can see that adjusting. You have your key in the lower right, you have your time at the bottom, your BPMs at the top. And then in the upper right-hand corner, you have your pitch. So right now we're at plus or, plus or minus 8% for our pitch, and you can see as I adjust it, it adjusts the pitch. Um, also, the other display mode is library view, and to access that, you just use the, the scroll load library knob, and as soon as you start turning it, it uh, accesses your current crate, and so you can navigate in or out by using the, the back button there. And you also can enable day mode. So day mode, adjust the display to include day mode on or off. Next, uh, another use for the uh, beat jump length encoder is to scrub forward or back in a track. So you would hold shift and then you'd use this encoder if you needed a fast search, kind of like the old strip search, you can uh, do that. But it's worth noting too that this only works if you have your sync enabled inside Serato, uh, and that is in this setting right here. You go to DJ Preferences, and sync, if you had sync off, it wouldn't work. Uh, that, that, that scrubbing of track would not work. You have to have simple sync or one of the other sync options selected. Okay, moving around, we have our slip mode. And so what this does, it allows you to manipulate the platter without it losing time in the track. So that's slip mode. 
But also worth noting, if you let go of the platter at all, it's gonna resume its position in the track. So you really have to, if you're using slip mode, you, you have to keep your hand on the platter. Okay, now the shift function of the slip button is motor on or off. So then the surface becomes more of a pitch bin versus a scratch surface. So turn the motor back on. Uh, the next button for moving clockwise here, we have the uh, sensor silent cue. So it's just a temporary edit button. Now to access the silent cue portion of that, you're gonna access the main menu, shift and hardware software effects button. So I'm in the main menu. And the top on the navigation tree in the main menu is silent cue. So I were to select silent cue, the option is says swap sensor. And I could say yes or no. So I'm gonna say yes. And now this is a silent cue. What that is, if I were to press it, track keeps playing, it gets muted in Serato. And so then I can just immediately jump to a cue point. And so that is silent cue. And the shift function of silent cue is reverse. So that'll reverse the platter. Okay, next we've already talked a little bit about the library scroll, but there are some additional functions for this area. One is the shift function of the back button is to load it to your prep crates. So in Serato, you have a prepare crates. So if you're uh, going through and you find a song and you're like, oh, I wanna play this, but not quite yet, you can load it to your prep crate. So I just select it and I hold shift and press this button and it adds it to my preparation crate. There's also instant double. If you were to double tap this, I'll do it on this side. Let's load something else. So if I want to instant double, I just double tap the knob. And that brings it over to the other side. So that'll bring over the same track, the same tempo, the same place in the track. So if you want to do a quick juggle, or just get back over to the other side to free up your right deck. Say you like to scratch with your right hand. You can you could just instant double it to the left or right. So that's that function. It's just a double press of this. And then below that we have our stem split section and deck selection buttons. So I'll talk about stem split in one second, but for deck selection, it's pretty easy. So we have four decks on the rain performer. And right now I'm on deck two. So that's playing here, you can see deck two. If I wanted to load something to deck four, I would just select deck four. And there's no song loaded, so. And I select it on deck four. Now I can go back to deck two, I see it's still playing. But then I have deck four here. And so that's how you switch between uh, your decks on the performer. Let's go back to two. Next, stem split. So we're gonna talk about stem split. Uh, to enable stem split, we hit the stem split button. But before I do that, let me explain what it does. So stem split, when I press this button, right now I'm on deck two. So everything is on deck two, obviously. Let me switch this view so you can see all four decks inside Serato. So if I were to stop deck two, everything, you know, stops. If I were to manipulate, it's just all on one deck. Now, if I were to hit stem split, what happens is it instantly splits it across the two channels on the mixer section that are labeled stem split, stem split. So on this side, it's two and four. On this side, it's one and three. 
So you can see the icons. We have a microphone, that's acapella. That lines up with deck two, acapella. Then we have an instrumental on four, and that lines up with the instrumental keyboard icon on four. So as soon as I press stem split, it's gonna instantly split that track across two decks. Putting the acapella on two and the instrumental on four. Let me get to a vocal section. And so then I can add effects and things like that to um, just one of the elements. And so then if I want to exit Sim Split, I can just press Sim Split again. It'll put it all back on that original track. So I'm back on two. So that is Sim Split. And we'll get into that a little more in detail when I talk about all the various stims modes of the performer. Next, we have the uh, pitch range button. What this does, if I were to select and press the button, it adjusts the pitch range of the pitch fader. So right now I'm at plus or minus 8%. That means if I go all the way up, it'll slow down minus 8%. If I go up, it'll go plus 8%. Now I can adjust between plus or minus 8%, 16, and 50. The shift function of the range button is key lock. So what key lock is, key lock when it's on, it allows you to adjust the tempo of the track with the pitch slider, but the pitch or the key is not adjusted. So with key lock on, the key or pitch is the same at 0% as it is at minus 16%. Now, if I were to turn key lock off with the shift function, you'll hear that the tempo and the speed and the pitch are adjusted by the pitch slider. Let's turn that back on. And then next down we have the pitch slider and that is uh, you know how you adjust the speed or pitch of your track why you would use this if you have a performer, you probably already know, but this is to adjust the tempo of your track so that you can mix things together by aligning the BPMs. For example, if um, we have a track on one side, let's see, okay, that's 117, and we need to match it to 120, we would adjust the pitch slider. In this case, it's a little less than 3%, and now the tempos are aligned. So that's why you'd want to adjust the pitch to uh, mix songs together. Below the pitch slider, we have the pitch bin buttons. Now these are great to nudge the track in speed, you know, up or down if you're mixing. So why that would be useful if you're, you dropped another track and you're mixing it in and you didn't quite get it on the one, you can adjust it, nudge it into place. Or if it's too fast, you, you have dropped it in too early, you can pitch bend it back. Or if you're playing a track that isn't perfectly you know, beat gridded or doesn't have a perfect tempo, like something with a live drummer. As you're mixing, you can use your ear to listen for when things drift out of alignment and you can nudge them with the pitch bin buttons. You can also, if you're more of a traditionalist turntablist, you can drag on the platter or nudge on the platter. Now the shift function underneath these is adjusting between 33 RPM and 45 RPM. So that could be if you uh, want to do some advanced tricks or you're doing a routine or something like that and you need to adjust the tempo by a lot, you can just put it in the 45 mode. And so that's the shift function of those pitch bin buttons. Below this, we have the key adjust buttons. Now this will adjust the key of the track. up or down, so you can do that to uh, match keys of your different tracks. But you can also key sync by holding shift. And what that's gonna do, it's going to automatically 
find the compatible key of whatever track. Like for example, let's see, we'll load something else up over here. It's gonna back that down two steps to 7A, which would be the most uh, closest compatible key to 6A. And to turn that on or off, just press shift. And again, it's a shift function because it's in orange under the button. So shift and button uh, will access the key sync on or off. And you can always reset it by pressing this button as well because shift and the right key adjust has the reset function. So you can turn it on or off this way, or you can just quickly reset it by shift and right key adjust. Okay, below this section, we have uh, the stems, number two of our stems functions, and that is quick access acapella and instrumental buttons. So let's get to a vocal. So if I just press the top one, it's just acapella. Bottom is just instrumental. And then if I press shift and press this, it will echo out the element that it's removing. If I were to press shift and instrumental, it echoes out the acapella as it's removed. And if I were to press shift and acapella, it echoes out the instrumental as it's removed. Okay, next we're gonna talk about the looping section. So the looping section has three buttons. We have loop on or off, that's the top button. And then we have the bottom buttons, which are halving the loop link and doubling the loop link. So before I were to set a loop, I can adjust things and I can see them in the display how long the loop's gonna be. So if I only want four beats, And I can also, when I'm active in my loop, you can see that the button is lit up. I can half that loop by pressing the half button or lengthen it by two times by pressing the times two button. Now, the shift function of the top button is reloop. So if I hold shift and press this button, it's gonna jump to the beginning of the loop on that first beat. And to get out of a loop, I just press the top button. Now the bottom buttons, the shift function of those is manual loop. So manual loop in or manual loop out. And then if I need to manually adjust that endpoint, I can just press shift, press this loop out button, and then I can adjust it with the platter, and then press it again. And that's manual looping. All right, now we get that loop going again. So next, we're gonna talk about the pad modes in a separate section, but let's quickly talk about these buttons here. So we've all become very familiar with the shift button uh, that does a lot of things across the controller, but let's also talk about sync, Q, and the start stop button. So sync, obviously, if I have sync enabled in Serato, if I were to press sync, it's going to sync the tempo across the tracks. So for example, on the left deck, the BPM of this track that's loaded up is 115.7. We're at 120. So if I were to sync on this side, it's gonna sync it to 120. And so that you see that the, the BPM indicator is lit up in blue. That indicates sync is active. So then now that I'm synced, the tempos are matched automatically. Now, if you wanna turn sync off, it's a shift function, shift and sync button goes back to blue. You would have to do that on this side as well and then sync is off. Now below that is your, your Q button. So the Q button is a temporary Q point set in the track. So for example, this track, if I were to stop it, the Q point is set at the very beginning. Now this is separate from your hot cues, which are here. It just happens in this example, I have a hot cue set on beat one and a temporary cue is set on beat one. But if I wanted to set this temporary cue on this little kind of and beat, I would advance the track to that and I'd press the cue button. Okay, and then also a nice little trick, if you're starting from any of your cue points, 
and you want the song to keep playing, obviously if I am just holding it down, it's gonna keep playing. But if I want it to keep playing without me holding down the button or a hot cue button, just press the start stop button as you're pressing the cue button and it'll keep going. Now, if I were to press Q, it's gonna go back to my temporary cue point. But if I were to pause it and press Q, it's gonna set my temporary cue point where I pause it. And then if I'm somewhere in the track, anywhere in the track, and I wanna go back to the very, very beginning, a quick shortcut, it's a shift function of the Q button is to hold shift and press Q. And it goes back to the very beginning of the song, regardless of where that temporary Q button is set. And so that is the uh, Q function, the Q button. Next we have the start stop button, pretty self-explanatory. It stops or starts the track. But if you hold shift while the track is playing, you can uh, use this start stop as a stutter. And that stutter starts it from wherever the cue point sets. For example, if we set the cue point to... Set it here. Up next, let's take a look at the performance pad modes. On the performer, you have hot cue, you have roll, sampler, stems, and then the lower level pads, you can just double press the selection button to access pitch play, your save loops, scratch bank, and slicer. There's also an additional MIDI mapping pad mode. If you just go to hot cue and you press shift and select the hot cue button, now these eight pads are all MIDI mappable, including the two parameter buttons. So you have 10 MIDI mappable buttons that you can map to whatever. If you wanna use a sound switch with Serato, you can actually MIDI map these pads to sound switch controls. So you could black out your lights, you can strobe your lights, you can change um, different static looks just by MIDI mapping them to sound switch. So while you're performing, you can just switch over and then trigger your lights from the performer, which is actually really cool. Okay, there's also the ability to do a split pad mode. So any one of these top modes, hot cue, roll, sampler, and stems, you can layer up with the bottom pads. So whatever you hold first, so hot cue, and then you press stems, the first, the top row of hot cue pads will show up top, and then the bottom row will be the, the top row of stems pads. So these are your different elements. So very cool. And you can do that with any of these top pad uh, modes. So I can do roll on top and hot cue on bottom. Okay, you also have the OLED displays. Now these are super handy because what these displays show the top words are what's labeled on your top row pads and on the bottom you have what's labeled on your bottom row pads. Now for example, I'm on hot cue, so I, I've labeled my hot cues inside Serato and how to do that. Uh, for example, beat one, if we were to change that to down beat, here's what that would look like. So I just have to make sure I'm selected in my uh, Q, hot cue pad mode inside Serato. And I just go into the text and if I just wanna say that's the down beat, I just type it in there, press enter, and then it relays that to the, the OLED screen. So it's really handy because you can label your cue points, you know, whatever you want. So I have some of the, the verses labeled, go and show in. This one's Creeper Deeper. Outro beat. And then I have like my drum start, Congo start. So it's nice. And then there's a save loop mode here where you can also label your, your save loops. So for example, 
I have this save loop here. If I just go into my save loops inside Serato, I can just do uh, drums and horns loop. Press enter. And then now it's labeled as a drums and horns loop. And then when it comes to your uh, other modes like roll, it relays what the beat division is. So I can see that. And then on the bottom, since I have beat jump controls enabled, I can see beat jump values as well. And if I were to scroll through with the parameter to my different roll divisions, I can see those in real time as I go through them with the parameter buttons. Also, uh, the OLED screens are really handy for your samples. So if you enter sampler mode, uh, I just have some, you know, one shot samples here. But if I had DJ drops, I could label that as my DJ drop. And then I know what I'm triggering when I'm triggering it. So it's really handy. So I know that I have a rim shot here and a snare here. So very, very handy. The OLED screens are a game changer as far as DJing it, uh, as far as I'm concerned. And then when it comes to stems, I can see the various elements aligning with my stems pad mode on the OLED screen. So vocal, melody, bass, drums. And then I have the labeling of the stem effects below. So if I were to go to, I know vocals here, take it out, take out the bass, take out the horns, bring everything back in, vocal echo out. So very, very cool as far as knowing and keeping an eye on your various performance elements. All, you know, at a quick glance, really handy for routines and just DJing out live in general. Okay, so now let's just dive into some of these pad modes. Uh, pretty easy stuff. We already talked about the MIDI mode, which you can access here, but hot cue, that's where you can set your hot cues throughout the track to quickly jump to them. And then uh, to delete a hot cue, just hold shift, press the pad. But then I really want that back at the uh, beginning. So if I want to add it in, I just go to the beginning and I just press the button. And I'm back in there. And again, if I want to relabel that, I want it to say downbeat. I just go inside Serato, type in downbeat, hit enter, and then it's labeled. So that is the hot cue mode. Roll mode, that just lets you do different beat divisions of your rolls with the pads. And then you can hold down the pad and then use the parameter to lengthen or shorten that roll as you're holding down the pad. And then just release the pad. Next, let's look at sampler. We already kind of talked about that. You can label your samples inside of Serato. And then just trigger them from the pads. Stems, we touched on that. All your stem controls are available here, stems pad mode. Okay, now let's go to pitch play mode. So pitch play mode, if I double press this, I'm in pitch play. So this is gonna take whatever cue point is selected as the root note, then pitch it up or down. So I can scroll through with the parameters. for different semitone amounts. And then I can select the cue point that's used for pitch play by holding shift. And you see these are all lit up as the cue points. So if I want to do it as the go and show in. That's pitch play mode. And the pitch and time plugin is required to use pitch play mode, but it is included with your performer. There's a card in the box with the promo code or the, the code that you need to redeem that. So you're set there. Next is another mode that's really handy and that's save loops. And that allows you to, um, if you set a loop, you can save it to a pad. For example, let's exit this loop. And I'm just gonna set a one beat loop. And then I can just 
select an unlit pad, and that's gonna save that loop. And again, I can go in Serato and name that loop, but when I have it lit up in blue, that, that loop is selected. When it's in green and I press the button like that, it makes it green, that loop is not selected. But I can quickly jump to a loop by holding shift and pressing the button. I can jump between loops. Okay, now let's talk about Scratch Bank. So Scratch Bank lets you load up uh, up to 32 different banks inside Serato of a scratch sentence or scratch sample. And how that works, so I will open up, let me just close out samples. So if I open up Scratch Bank, you'll see all these slots. And then I can load up any track by just dragging and dropping it. And then it gives me the option to set the cue point that I wanted to trigger from. And so let's just do Q1 here. And so what that does is, when I'm in Scratch Bank, I select it, I'll instantly pull up the, the scratch track that I've set in Scratch Bank and it'll fire off from the sample that I've selected. So for example, so then if I, if I ever wanna get back to the track that I was just playing after scratch, scratch Bank enabling, I would just hold Shift and press any button on Scratch Bank. And that's gonna reload up my track. If I wanted to go in further to that track that I have loaded in my Scratch Bank, I could go to, let's see, I'll fire this one off. Then I can go over to cue points and go through them. But then if I still wanted to get back, let's get back into Scratch Bank, shift, press a button, then I exit Scratch Bank. Really handy tool for uh, routines or just scratch samples that you really enjoy to load them up. Ideally, it'd be on the other deck, obviously, so you could scratch over the top of your track that you're playing, but that's how you navigate through Scratch Bank. And then next, we have Slicer. Let me get to a save loop. We'll go to Slicer. And so Slicer will go through a sequence of notes. You can see the blue pad is the note that's playing, but what Slicer lets you do is chop it up in real time. You can hold it down, and then with Slicer, you can also use a parameter buttons to shorten that or lengthen it. So that is the, the slicer mode. Okay, another mode inside of the hot cue mode is your uh, Serato flip. So how Serato flip works, let me exit this loop because it'll be captured in the flip if I don't. I can press the left parameter button to arm my Serato flip recording. And so if I do that, it's armed. Now with Serato flip, you can basically live remix things and then save them uh, if you like the version that you just made. And so I'm on the recording. So now I'm going to start by pressing a Q button. Okay, so then I just, I did a, a few different cue points. And then so since my Serato flip was enabled, it captured all those. And inside of Serato, you can see you have an active flip recording because the play deck is lit up in red. So then, now if I want to load that, I just press my right parameter button. And so that's my flip recording. And if I wanted to save that, I would just go to my uh, flip section here, and then I could just label it here and uh, call it whatever, Jake Flip. And then I can access that, you know, anytime I load the track, I can play from my flip and you'll see it in the, in the title here, it says Jake Flip, so I know what I'm playing. So yeah, pretty cool little function. And again, that's in uh, hot cue mode and your left parameter starts your recording. 
or triggers your recording and then it goes as soon as you start adding different elements with your hot cues or whatever, that's when it starts recording and saving. And then this stops recording, right parameter starts your recording up from the beginning. So that is Serato Flip. Now we're gonna take a deep dive into the effects. The Performer features four knob controlled channel effects, filter, filter roll, noise, and flanger. And we also have 29 main effects which are controlled in this center section here. So in the main effects section, what we have, we have six quick selection buttons. By default, we have echo, recycler, scale down, reverb, matrix, and echo out. And on each side, we have a parameter knob on the left. This can be used to uh, scroll to various functions and settings for each effect, but it can also be pressed to cycle through available options on that selected effect. On the right, we have the joystick, which can be used to control the beat divisions or other parameters of the effect and also select the BPM that the effect engine will operate on. For example, right now 120 selected, I can select 99 on this side for that particular effect uh, to operate on. Now, the aluminum toggles, that's how you engage the effect. On, on each side, you have the effects select buttons. On this side, we have channels two and four. I'm on two right now, so if I wanted to engage an effect, I would select two and flip the toggle, but I can also switch over to four. And on this side, it controls one and three. Now, I would definitely recommend going to rain.com slash downloads and grabbing the user guide because there's an in-depth effects section that goes through all the different main effects and the parameters and the description so you can really get an idea of what each effect does. But for this demo, let's start by looking at echo on the main effects. So echo, for example, the parameters that you're able to control, you have the high pass frequency cutoff that's controllable by scrolling with the encoder. However, if I were to press the encoder, I have the ability to adjust the feedback. So for example, if I wanna put this at 90 and the high pass frequency cutoff at 1308 hertz, the right will adjust my beat division of the echo. So I can go, let's say half. And to engage that effect, I can flip the toggle up. That latches it on, or I can temporarily engage the effect by pressing the toggle down. And the depth knob controls the amount of effect. And if I'm playing with these settings and I, you know, try different things and I'm, I get a little uh, mixed up and not sure what it was originally set to, I can just quickly hold shift. And again, there's an orange reset text right here. So if I hold shift and press the effects button, it'll reset it back to the uh, default. Now I can save my settings. If I really dial in something I enjoy, let's say I always want to use that in a half beat and I always want 100% feedback. And I really like that combination. I can just long press that effects button and it'll save that effect. And then if I'm adjusting things, all over the place and I reset it. It's gonna go back to what I saved it as. Now, if you want to reset all the effects, in the main menu there is an option called Effects Reset that you can select and uh, restore all the effects to their factory defaults. We're not gonna worry about this. We're not gonna worry about that for this demo, but uh, what I'm gonna show you next is how to go through all the available effects and assign them to these quick selection buttons here. It's really easy, let's just select Echo Out. If I just hold the button and use the encoder to scroll, I get to see all the available effects on the performer. If I wanted to select one, for example, we'll do stutter out, I just press this encoder while the button's selected, and now, instead of echo out, this is stutter out. And if I ever wanted to just disengage an effect, another way that you can do that on the performer is just deselecting the button so there's no effect selected. But, for example, stutter out, if I'm looking at what the encoder knob, the parameter encoder, and the joystick does on this one, the joystick will cycle through the various patterns and the parameter will cycle through the links. There's no secondary function of the parameter for stutter out. Every effect is different. Again, check out that user guide on rain.com slash downloads to learn all about all the effects. But let's look at stutter out. So if I select pattern number eight, length one bar, if I want to do three bars, Select a different pattern. 
dial a different length. Now, if I really like that combination, pattern number nine, length of two bars, I just long press the button. It saves that combination for the stutter out. So then stutter out saved to this slot. If I power down the performer and take it to a gig and I turn it back on, what I've saved for my effects in these six slots will remain uh, when I power it on. So I don't have to do that every time. And especially if I save the, uh, the dialed in parameters that I really like, like on the echo, that's gonna load up every time as well. And then if I ever just wanna start fresh, I can just go into that main menu, select the factory reset and reset everything back to its factory default. On the performer, we did port over the fader effects from the Rain 70 A-Track Signature Edition mixer. And so those are worth going through here because there are some interesting things that you can do. First, you have the option in the menu to enable or disable the fader effects. So there's an option called fader effects. I can turn it on or off. Why would I ever wanna reduce the amount of effects that I have at my disposal? Well, th there's a good point uh, for that because I'll show you in a second. With fader effects, due to the nature of taking over the precision fill faders with the effect, there is a bit of a, a workflow change that you need to be familiar with. Okay, so let's select a fader effects. And you can see that they are identified by having an FDR at the beginning of the name. So on the performer, we have fader filter, fader pitch, fader ring modulator and fader roll and fader tone generator. So there are four different tone generators included in that. So for this example, let's do fader roll, I'll select it. Now, see it's flashing, that means the fader effect is active. And why this is important, because as soon as you engage a fader effect on the selection buttons, and I'm not even talking with the toggles, as soon as it's selected on the selection buttons, all channels go to 100% volume as if the faders were all the way up. So as you can see, this has no control over the volume anymore because this volume fader is now used to control these fader effects. So this is important because if you have, say your crossfader in the middle like this and you're playing a track on this side, let's deselect that fader effect so I can show you. And I have my volume slider down, so I, I'm good. But as soon as I engage that fader effect, I can hear it. So that's just something to be aware of. And again, it flashes. So if you're out playing and you engage a fader effect on accident, then uh, you're like, what's going on here? This is an indicator that you can just deselect that and then it'll, it'll take that away. Or just make sure that all of your other decks are not being um, live or playing while you're engaging a fader effect. So now let's take a look at this fader effect. So again, we have the fader roll. How this works is now when I trigger the toggle, I can use this up fader to control the roll. And the alternative uh, function that you can use the parameter knob to control is the, the high pass frequency. So it has a, has a cutoff that you can add to this. So that is the uh, fader effects for the roll. We also have ring modulator. And we have pitch. And a bunch of features on the tone generators. So for example, Let's just stop this track. It's easier to demo it without a track playing. I can select the note with the joystick on the right. And on the parameter knob, I can use that to select the type of tone. A 
We've got a sawtooth. And then, again, this selects a note. And then the parameter knob on the left can go through octaves. But it can also select the scale. And then you can use the toggle to play it if you like. And the knob in the middle, the depth knob, that controls the mix with the signal, with the deck playing. And those are the fader effects. Now let's move on to the channel effects. Now by default, it's set to filter. If you were to have an external input hooked into the, either the line or phono in, these channel effects, since they are software effects, they will all default to filter. The main effects, however, will work on any external input. So if you have a turntable or some sort of media player inputting signal into the performer, you can still use your main effects to control that. Even things like the hold echo uh, and things like that will sample that input and apply the effect to it. But for the channel effects, it will just default to filter. By default. And so let's just go through these. We have filter, filter roll. We have noise. And you have your flanger. And in the main menu, you do have the option to adjust your filter. So if you can change the resonance to whatever you'd like in the options. So you can dial it in and give it more or less resonance. And again, that will apply to your external signals that are using the line phono inputs to input into the performer. And you can also combine your main effects with the channel effects. So if I'm doing, a, say, noise, we'll do it on two. And I want to echo it out. It also echoes out that, that noise as well. Let's say we'll do a filter roll. So you can stack your channel effects with your main effects. And again, I can't stress enough, go to rain.com slash downloads, grab that user guide. It'll teach you so much about all the various effects available on the performer. You also have access to control the Serato software effects by pressing this button here, the hardware software effects. When it's blue, that's accessing the internal main effects of the performer. When it's orange, that means it's controlling the software effects inside Serato. So you can adjust your effects with the drop down inside Serato to put them on various positions inside of Serato, which will coordinate with the quick selection button. So this echo button, if I wanted to be the uh, distortion effect, for example, I would select that there. Second one, it's set to delay automatically. Reverb's the next one. Uh, low pass filter. And then we have also another delay and a reverb on this side. So then to engage, I just select the button and then I hit the toggle. That's the distortion effect. This one's delay. And the knob affects the wet dry of the selected effect. And then to toggle back to your main effects, you just press the button again, we're back to our internal effects. Now let's talk BPM. 
In the middle here on the OLED screen, you see that we have two BPM numbers. We have 120 for the right side and 99.9 .9 for the left side. Now that is what corresponds to the speed of the track that's loaded. The value is taken from Serato, then adjusted based on the pitch. Why this is important is this is the BPM that the effect will use when triggered. So for example, we have 120. I'm gonna select echo. We'll do, we'll do keep it on half. And if I trigger it, you'll notice that it's set to the BPM. So if I did it as two, it's timed out. Now, if I wanted to manually adjust that, say I have an external source, say vinyl, that it doesn't carry over the BPM, I can do that two ways. I can tap it in by tapping the button. I'm purposefully tapping it not in time, so you can see that it's different. To reset it, I can just long press this. It's back to the auto BPM from Serato. But again, if I was using an external source, I wouldn't have that, so I'd have to tap it in. But if I was playing something and I knew what the BPM was, I can hold shift and use the encoder, and that will manually adjust that BPM on that OLED screen. So if I knew exactly the BPM of what I was playing or what I wanted it to be, I can adjust it this way. And again, I can long press this to reset it back to the auto BPM. Another nice addition, we, we ported this over from the A-Track 70 mixer, is BPM copy. So if I wanted to scratch over a beat on one side, the speed is 120. My sample track with scratch samples is 99. So if I wanted to put a little echo on that, let's go half beat. It's gonna use the 99 on this side for the echo. You hear it's, it's off because the 120 affects the right side for the effects. But the BPM on the left side affects the effects engine for one and three. So it's off. I can quickly copy that over by pressing shift and tapping the joystick to the side that I want to copy the value over to. So I'm selected on 120, I press shift, and it immediately copies over. And to reset that back to automatic, I just select it with the joystick and long press the auto. So that's a nice little feature for scratch DJs or if you just wanna you know, do a little sampling while you're playing out live and you want it to be in time with uh, the deck that's playing, it's an easy way to do it. Again, shift, copy it over with the joystick while it's selected. Very cool stuff. Okay, now let's take a look at the mixer section. Since the Rain Performer is a four channel motorized DJ controller, there are four channels. So you can see that they're numbered three, one, two, four, that aligns with the numbering inside Serato. And four and three are also switchable to uh, line or phono input. And so you can see that if I'm on deck four here and I switch it to line, there's a notification, uh, an indicator on the screen that that's a line input. And then up top are sources. So we can attach two laptops to the performer. So you can DJ with a friend or have a backup laptop. So this is a, a selectable assignment switch here. So right now I'm in the uh, computer input A, but if I were to switch it over to B, that would be uh, connecting to laptop B. So let's switch it back over to A because that's where we are. And then also we have the gain knobs on top and then the three band EQ. So the three band EQ can be switched to control stems with stems level EQ. And here's how you access that. Let's get a, uh, a track going with the vocal. Okay, so to access the stem level EQ control, 
I'm just going to hold shift and then press the headphone cue of the channel that I want to enable that stem level control on. So we're on two, so let's do two. So now I've got, instead of a three band EQ, I've got stem control. And you can see that because the cue button is flashing. If I let go of the shift, it's just normal. And I can use it like a normal headphone cue if I wanted to. But when I hold shift and I see it flashing, that's how I know stem level EQ is enabled. So then instead of a three band EQ, what we have here is uh, we have vocal control, melody control, and drums. And I can boost those or reduce them as I like. And then to get it back to just a normal three band EQ, hold shift and press the button. Okay, and that is the stem level EQ. We've already covered below that, that's the, the channel effects. And so that affects each channel individually. And then next, let's talk about some of the other controls. In the upper left-hand corner, we have mic one on or off, and that makes the mic one obviously on or off. But you have controls here for overall level, high, low, and then you have the effects. So you have echo on your mic, and you can adjust the level here. But to engage the echo on the mic, you just flip up the metal uh, switch and that enacts the echo on your mic. You can also enable a talk over feature on your mic by holding shift and pressing the mic one on button. Beneath it, you'll see in the orange, talk over is the shift function. So if I enable talk over, now it flashes. And so what talk over is, it automatically ducks the music as you talk on the mic. And inside the main menu, there are settings to, um, change the amount of duck or talk over time. So the, the ducking of the music, you can adjust how long that stays ducked after you're done talking and a, and a bunch of other features are adjustable inside the, the menu. So now that I en enabled that once on the mic one, I can press the button again and if it's flashing, that means talk over is enabled. And again, talk over will just duck the volume of the music as you're talking on the mic. If I wanna take talk over off, just hold shift again, press the button. And when it's a steady green, that means uh, it's just mic on without the talk over enabled. Next, let's look at the right section of the mixer. Up top, we have a quantize button. So what quantize does is when you enable this button, anything you do on the pads, say the, the hot cues, will automatically be quantized to land on a beat. Now inside of Serato, in your uh, settings area under DJ preferences, you can set your quantize value. So right now it's set to one beat. And so that's going to um, only allow these hot cues to land on the one beat value. So even if I were to try to press a hot cue very quickly, it's, it's not gonna allow that. It's only gonna snap it to that beat, so. And then you can adjust that to, uh, you know, half beat, so land on the half beat. And so that's so you really cannot be off beat. And this may be handy. Say you're um, kind of doing a live DJ friendly edit or something where you're taking out the acapella at the beginning and then jumping into the chorus. If you turn on quantize, you're pretty much guaranteed to always land on beat according to your quantize settings inside of Serato. Next. We go down the side, we have our view meter, which is adjustable between pre-main and post-main inside the, the menu settings. And then we have the booth zone adjustment here. That's for the quarter inch booth output in the back. Beneath the booth zone knob, we have the sampler level knob. So this will adjust the, the volume level of the sampler inside of Serato. So if I were to have this um, assigned to auxiliary, where it is now, then I can use this knob to adjust the volume. So let's go over to sampler.
And so that's the sampler level knob. Now, alternatively, I can assign the sampler to deck number four by pressing this button. Now, now why that's uh, kind of nice to do and fun to do is that now I can layer effects on that. So if I assign my uh, scale down, for example, to uh, deck number four, and adjust this a bit, let's see here. We'll go eighth. And so then you can uh, add your effects to your samples. And so if you have a, a DJ drop or something like that, then you can have some fun with some echo and it's always gonna be time to, you know, you're playing track because you can, you know, add the effect and it will lock into the BPM of what you're playing. So that's a benefit of adding it to deck number four. Otherwise, just take that off. And then you can use the auxiliary sampler level to control the volume. But remember, you want to use that knob you have to have the a selected inside serato because that is auxiliary so uh keep that in mind now let's talk about the mixer section so the mixer section features four precision fill faders now these are tension adjustable so you'll need to remove these fader caps and you're going to remove these five screws and then if you do that you'll see that you can have access to the tension adjustment magnets on each of the up faders as well as the tension adjustable magnet on the Magpore crossfader. So you would tighten or loosen those as you see fit, put the plate back on, then you're all set. It does have an added feature of fader start if you hold shift and use the up faders. You can do fader start, also works for the crossfader. And again, that's old shift, and then you have fader start. The crossfader section features a external tension adjustment knob so that you can loosen or tighten the resistance of the crossfader. It also features a curve adjustment knob so you can have it sharp or a smoother mix. Then it also features on the front crossfader assignment switches. So this allows you to put any of the four channels on the right side of the crossfader, on the left side of the crossfader, or you can just bypass the crossfader altogether so that it has no effect. On the front of the unit, we have mic two section. This has a mic two on off switch, as well as level control and a dual band EQ, so you have control over the high and low of that mic too. On the right side, we have our headphone control. We have split Q switch, which will split the signal between uh, your left and right headphone based on the channel playing. So that's so if you want to monitor one side in the right ear and mix in the other side with your left ear, that's what split Q is for. And then we also have the level knob here for your headphones, as well as the uh, Q and main mix knob. So this is if you want to uh, listen to cued sources in your headphones, so you turn it to Q and then when you select something with the headphone Q buttons, that would be sent to the headphones. Or if you want only the main signal out, you just turn this all the way to the right. And so you're only gonna hear the main output signal. So whatever would be going out over the main outputs, you'll hear in your headphones. If you want to kind of go in between, you can just turn this halfway, so then you can kind of listen to the main output, but also cue up a source without it going over the headphones to kind of listen to get your bearings before it goes live. So that pretty much sums up this feature overview video for the Rain Performer. Remember, go to rain.com slash downloads, grab that user guide, get familiar with it. And if you have questions about the performer, just drop them below in the comments and we'll do our best to answer them for you. Thank you for watching.